Good morning and welcome to One Church Crossroads. My name is James Burbank. I'm part of the staff here. It's Sunday morning and there's a lot of places you can be and we're just honored that you chose to be here with us today. Would you stand to your feet as we go into worship? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have the ability to come into your house and worship your name. Be with us and bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can have a seat. You can have a seat. Thank you this morning. What a great morning to be in church. What a great morning to be together. And I just had to wear this just to do the announcements because they may not win another game besides last Sunday. So I have to wear it when I can. <laughs> I was going to wear the whole uh, jersey and everything, but I thought that might you know, bring a curse upon them as far as winning any more games. Well, welcome to One Church. My name's Tracy, and I'm one of the pastors, and I'm going to take that off because I get hat head, and uh, we're so glad you're here and you're with us. You can be anywhere on a Sunday morning, and you're here. You could be home watching the Raiders game, which that would really be bad because they don't need any bad mojo on them from you skipping church, so that's why I'm here, but uh, we're just <laughs> grateful that you're with us this morning. If you are a guest we want to welcome you, and uh, we want to talk to you, meet you. So after a while, back here in the VIP, just out these doors in a little bit, we're going to have a break, and you can bring a card, the little yellow card that's in the planner. You fill that out. Come back there. We have a gift for you. We want to meet you. we got coffee and donuts, and so uh, we'd appreciate that if this is your first time. And if you're a second-time guest, fill that card out. And come back there also because we have another gift for you. And we want to just honor you and thank you for being here. Uh, this is a great church. If you're looking for a church, this is the church. You found it. You don't got to look anymore. Uh, so, and, uh, you know, you can go, oh, well, I've heard there's a lot of good churches. There are. But this is a great church. A lot of good churches. <laughs> this is a great church. So why would you want to settle for a good church when you could be in a great church? So just, just a thought. And I may be a little prejudiced on that. But uh, I love being here. Love being a part of that and being a part of this church. Well, we have a few things we want to tell you about. We want to remind you that you can find out information in the planner. Also online at visitonechurch.com. Uh, and then on our Facebook, we post a lot on our Facebook page. So you can check in there and like us, and we'd appreciate that. Um, but a couple things we want to remind you of next week on October 4th, we have our Connect Lunch. So what that is for, if you're, a, you're new to us in the last month or two months, uh, we want to get to know you. We want to share a little bit about what we are and where we're going and our vision as a church. And so we're going to provide lunch for you. But we need to know that you're going to be there so we can make sure we have food for you. So if you'll fill out the yellow card and let us know on there, hey, I want to be a part of the Connect Lunch, we'll get in contact with you this week and set that up. It's right after church. Child care is provided. Um, and so we're, we're grateful for that. So please sign up for that and let us know. Um, the next thing we want to let you know about is we are part of the One Church Network. Okay, we're a church plant out of the One Church Network. We planted a little over two years ago. And uh, back in January, we bought this property and moved out here from Oakdale and Sylvan. But we're part of something bigger than just us. So we have our One Church, our Bethel campus down on Scenic. We have also our One Church St. John's campus, which is down off of, I believe it's, is it Downey or Bernie? Bernie. Bernie and Downey right there. Um, and then our campus here. And then in February, we are launching a fourth campus in Ripon. So, uh, yeah. And we're a part of that. Um, We've been investing in that as a church, as our, our campus. We've been investing in their campus as their leaders are getting ready uh, to prepare and get ready to launch. And uh, the, the pastors of that is going to be uh, Pastor Dave and Kim Leatherman. Um, and that's their team. They've got a bunch of people that are moving um, from out of the area that are going to join them. Um, some from the Sacramento area. One I just met uh, the other day, she's moving up from L.A., and so that's their launch team right now. That's their, their, their core. So some of you recognize the Christie's and the Elrods are there. Um, so they have a great team that they're putting together. Well, they're going to be here with us next week to share their vision and to share their heart and share what God's doing and uh, where they're at on their launch 
And so we want you to be here and support and pray. And then next week, we're going to receive an offering, just a one-time offering to, to help them out with some of their startup expenses and costs. So uh, if you just pray about that throughout this week, uh, you know, I love that we are a part of something so much bigger than just one campus. And, and right now, between our three campuses, there's about 600 people meeting for church this morning. And uh, a lot of new faces, a lot of visitors uh, throughout those campuses getting the opportunity to hear about the grace of Jesus Christ. And so we're so grateful for that. So be here next week. Also, Trunk or Treat is right around the corner, October 31st from 5.30 to 8 p.m., we announced this last week that we're going to be joining the network in this. So we're going to be joining them at the Bethel campus. Uh, a couple of things. We just, our parking lot's not ready. Um, we're in the middle of remodeling children's building. They're actually hopefully going to start on our parking lot in the next two weeks, tearing it up and, and starting. How many would like to be able to park on blacktop instead of gravel i know man i can't even wear my high heels no more so i just i trip i'm just kidding i don't wear high heels i'm wearing okay so some guy the guys were giving me a hard time because normally i'm in shorts and rubber slippers and uh i'm wearing my this is my cowboy get up all right my son is in a rodeo this weekend He's roping for high school rodeo, and he's out in Oakdale, and I was there yesterday, and I was in shorts and my flip-flops, and I was just like, I was like way out of place, you know. Everybody's like looking at me like, city boy. So I thought, you know, today I got to go out there again, so I figured I'd throw my Wrangler shirt on. It's the only Wrangler thing I own, um, and, and throw some jeans on and look like I have cowboy boots, but they're not. They're zip up. They're cheaters. Uh, so uh, those other ones are uncomfortable, man. Those are just brutal. So, uh, so that's you know. So we're heading out there, but um, just we're so excited about what we're doing as a network. And I just want to encourage you to be a part of Trunk or Treat. Sign up, volunteer to do a trunk or help out. Uh, we're going to be helping out with some registration and different things with them. Uh, so please sign up and let us know that you're available that day. All right, I'm going to invite the ushers to come at this time. And I just want to say once again how grateful I am to be a part uh, of a, a family and a church that is so giving, so faithful, um, I don't know if some of you remember our friend Terry Allen from uh, Mercy Calcutta. He was here and he shared with us when I came back from Calcutta, India back in February. Uh, he's a friend of mine on Facebook and he's in Calcutta with some more pastors uh, th this week. And uh, just, well, he's showing pictures and it just, again, it stirred in my heart what we're a part of. And uh, we have given over $18,000 this year to Calcutta, Mercy Calcutta. And um, that's from when we were there last year. Um, and it's just unreal. We're, we're aiming for $25,000. So we have, you know, we have October, November, and December to, to, to bring the rest in. So I just want to encourage you. We'll give you more of an update in the next couple of weeks, but... I was just, I'm just blown away that how much this, this body of believers believes in, in giving and the faithfulness of God and reaching not only our community, not only our family, but around the world. So thank you for that. Uh, Lord, we thank you today that, Father, you're, uh, you're, you are our resource. You are our everything. And, Lord, we, uh, we don't give this, Lord, uh, with sad hearts. We give with cheerful hearts because we serve an amazing God. So Lord, I pray that you would bless us and bless this offering in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, while they're serving you and with the offering, I want to give you a little update on our children's building. Um, we had to order a, a, a beam, a special order beam to go across to keep the ceiling from falling in. And, uh, which you, you'll be grateful for that for our children. Um, so, but they're all pretty short, so it probably wouldn't hit them too bad. Why not come all the way down? No, I'm just kidding. 
But uh, we have the beam. It arrived yesterday. We're putting that in. So it's kind of put us behind the eight ball. So we, 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 we were hoping to be sheetrocked and textured by now and ready to paint, and we're not there yet. Uh, so we are we're going to be rushing to try to get them back in there this week. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen, but I do need, uh, we'll need some help with painting. Um, and I know Lynn's, Lynn's got the, he's got the hookup to help us with the paint. So we'll talk. Um, but I need guys to help paint. Hopefully by Thursday we are painting. Um, also, um, we have some closets that we're putting in. We need to build shelves for the closets. So if you are, uh, you know, good at that stuff, I'm a rough carpenter. I can hammer some two by fours, but doing that finish, nice work, that's not me. So if you're good at that, come talk to me um, and we'll get you set up with that. But it's, uh, it's the, the, the transformation that's going to happen in that building is going to be amazing. And, and the lives that are going to be touched, those children's lives that are going to be touched, that's what it's all about. And that's what we're investing in there. So if you can be a part of that, we want to invite you to help us out. All right. Okay. So now it is that time in the service that you've been dying for. You've been waiting for. It's time to get coffee and donuts. All right. So stand to your feet. We are going to have connect. We call this connection break. So if you're new, you go out here to the metal doors. We got your coffee and donuts there. Everybody else, you got to share one donut out the back. No, I'm just kidding. We have donuts for everybody, but we'll be back here in about five minutes. So let's go. Lord, I thank you for your amazing grace love that is never ending love that reaches way beyond my issues my problems over real people with real issues finding real hope lord that hope is in your love and in your grace and in you we give you the praise in jesus name amen amen you can be seated i just want to I want to encourage those that you raise your hand or just reconnect with God. Let me, let me tell you something. You don't have to start over. You know, that's the amazing thing about his love and his grace is as soon as we change our heart, as soon as we turn it, he's right there. And that relationship is reconnected and he's ready to go. He's ready to go. All right, you left off here. We need to fix the little things and there we go. And he's right there with you. So, um, he, you know, I just want to encourage you, go forward. You don't got to go backwards and try to figure it all out. Keep going forward in him. He's an amazing God with amazing grace. And this pastor has needed his amazing grace many a times. And I will need it many more times uh, in my lifetime. I will have to, I have to reconnect on a daily basis uh, with him. So uh, we're so grateful. Well, Again, uh, good morning. We've been in a series, uh, The Ten Commandments, and this has been, if you've not been here, I encourage you to go online, watch the series. Uh, it's just been a great way to walk through the Ten Commandments um, and put them into our lives and apply them to our lives. Uh, last week, we had our family service, and we do have kids in here today. Um, and we had, but we had a great family service. We did some worship with the kids. They were all up front worshiping God. And, uh, we want to teach our kids from the time they're little, how to worship God and how to pray and how to seek after God with their whole heart. That it's not just a social club that we entertain them over here, but we're teaching them the things of God. And so every once in a while, it's nice to have them in here where we get to worship with them and uh, get to be a part of that and train them up the way that God is calling us. It was also an honor. Last week, I got to preach for the first time with one of my grandsons. So Maka, who's 10 years old, he preached with me last week. So that was just an amazing uh, uh, time. And uh, he got done and afterwards he told his mom and said, man, I, that, that was, that was so awesome. That was so much fun. You know, I want to do it again. So tell Papa T, I want to do it again. I can't do it next week, but the next two weeks from now, I'm ready to go. So I don't know. I think I lost a job. So, uh, but, uh, I think I'm going to give him thou shalt not murder. So we'll see what he does with that one. Uh, but, uh, it's, uh, it was great. Great. Um, we are so excited uh, to have the kids with us. But, uh, you know, 
We, we've been covering uh, a lot of these commandments, and we've kind of been out of order just because with the children's building and things, we've kind of shifted, and then we've had some different speakers. Um, in a couple weeks, Pastor Danny is going to be here uh, with his wife, Allison, and it would be uh, his first time preaching for us or sharing with us, and he's going to share out of his life story on one of the commandments, and it's going to be a, a powerful, powerful uh, message. Uh, I just, I know his story and uh, God has been amazing and God's grace has been amazing there. So, uh, you know, but we've been careful. We've been kind of shifting the commandments because uh, we wanted to, with the kids in here, I want to make sure I kept it at PG uh, or G rated. Uh, some of these messages when you get into them can uh, get a little in depth. So, uh, but we're excited. So today you get the privilege to be here because I'm going to cover two of the Ten Commandments in one service. So we'll be out at about two o'clock and we'll be done. <laughs> but I need to get in. I'm just kidding. I got to be at a rodeo. So, um, it, But we're going to cover two of the commandments. We're going to cover commandment number eight and commandment number ten. All right? And anybody know what those are? Right off the bat, you know what that is. Thou shalt not steal. What's that? I can't hear you. I'm deaf. You got to speak loud. Number 10. Anybody know number 10? Don't covet. Don't covet. There you go. Like those jet skis that are in the parking lot, Joel. I had to repent after I saw those because I was wanting them hooked up to my truck. Uh, so, but, uh, so we're going to do do not steal and do not covet. Now, uh, the, the whole idea, the whole thing behind this is that, that we have been set free to live free. The Ten Commandments were not given to ruin or take away our fun or our freedom. They were actually given a lot to allow us to walk in greater freedom from the things that can so easily enslave us. You know, and that's, that's a, that is so pivotal because when, when God gave the commandments to the Israelites, they had been in years and years and years of slavery. And, he's, and then they're out in the wilderness and they start complaining and they start wanting to go back to the slavery. And he says, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I need to give you some things to help you understand what true freedom is. And true freedom is not the ability to do what I want. True freedom is my ability to do what God created me for which is to worship him and be in relationship with him. So that is really the, the heart behind this. The Ten Commandments are God's way to bless and protect us so that we can truly live free. Uh, I'm going to have, we've got a lot of scriptures that I'm going to go through, so you can write on the back of your planner and you can keep notes there. But in Deuteronomy 440, it says this, Keep his decrees and commands, which I am giving you today, so that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that you may live long in the land the Lord God gives you for all time. You see, that is the heart of it. That God is wanting to bless us. He's wanting us to live in freedom. He's wanting us to live in the land that he has given us. He's wanting to, us to live in the freedom that he has purchased for us. You know, that's the hard thing is I see so many followers of Jesus who they have been saved and they have been set free, but they are not living free. They're living in a bondage. They're living enslaved to the things that they were trapped with, and, and they've not come free. And, and God says, I'm giving you these things to help you live free, to walk in freedom. So today we're going to look at these two commandments. The first one is Exodus 20, 15. I'm sorry, my voice is going. It was a long football game the other night. Uh, <clears throat> My voice about shot. Exodus 20, 15, you shall not steal. All right, we can move on now. Uh, that's, that's pretty, pretty, <laughs> I don't know. If you, you want me, I'll break that down in the, in the Greek and Hebrew. Do not take something that doesn't belong to you. It's pretty complicated, I know. It's, 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 it's tough. It's tough. It, it, that's what it means. It's, it's not, do not take something that doesn't belong to you. How many are guilty of breaking this commandment? 
Raise your hand. All of you, raise your hand. All of you have broken this commandment. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Lord, we're just going to pray right now for those who didn't raise their hands. All right? I mean, uh, you know, this, uh, somewhere along the line, some of us, somewhere along the line, you have taken a pencil that didn't belong to you or a pen from work that didn't belong to you. So you are in this boat with me. All right? So don't be sitting there like, oh, I never, yeah, sure, right? All right, you probably took somebody's coffee at some point, you know, out there, you took an extra donut. No, I'm just kidding. No, yeah, you know, I, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess. I got caught shoplifting when I was a teenager at an amusement park. Um, and uh, I don't even know, do you know this story? You do know this story now. <laughs> I was trying to think. I was hoping they were going to be here. Uh, <laughs> Mom and dad are here. But I was with my family at an amusement park down south. And I won't give the name because this is on the, on the web. And if they find out, I'm still not allowed in the park. Um, I got caught shoplifting. I got dragged to the back of the museum or the amusement park in these back rooms. And uh, they, you know, fingerprinted me and all this stuff. And I had a bag full of stuff that I had bought. And then I couldn't find the receipts. And I did buy that. But the thing I got caught shoplifting was uh, just something really stupid. And um, so I'm back there. And uh, like just a couple months before that, I had turned 18. And so they're sitting there going, well, we're probably going to send you down to the Los Angeles County Jail. And I'm thinking, <laughs> no. I'm freaking out. I'm scared to death. My parents are in the park. They don't know that I have been arrested in the park. And my brother is there with me. And uh, so finally, after about an hour of this ordeal of, you know, crying and uh, acting like I was 10, begging, um, they, they, they ushered me out of the park and said, you are no longer allowed here. So... Um, um, it was the most humiliating thing over a stupid $10 item. And I was looking at losing some of my freedom. You see, God sets these things up so that we can walk in freedom, so that we can live in freedom. You see, we can steal a lot of things. Not, we can steal property. We can steal material goods, material stuff. Um, you know, somebody uh, a couple weeks ago broke into our children's building. They stole my DeWalt toolkit, my drill, and my saw, sawzall, and my batteries. And then they stole my tool bag. And um, they took off with it. And uh, by the, the grace of God, I got all my stuff back this week. Um, it was a, a, a homeless guy had broke in there. He stole it, and they saw him walking down the street with a DeWalt kit, and they were like, this doesn't quite add up. And so they pulled him over, and he had some stolen checks on him, and so he was arrested, and they had my stuff. And by chance, uh, somebody in our church, her husband is a deputy sheriff here in Riverbank, was here last week. Shelly was telling him about it. He came, or telling her about it. She called her husband. He came by in his patrol car, took a little report, I sent him what I lost or what was stolen, and he called me Monday morning, and he said, hey, all your stuff's right here in our, at our substation in storage, all your tools. And uh, he said, you can come, come pick them up. We just got to sign some papers and stuff like that. And I was like, are you kidding? I've been, my brother's in law enforcement. I've been around it a long time. You hardly ever get stolen property back. That is just like, that's an almost impossible. And, uh, you know, the, the cool thing about this was this is just bigger than some stolen property. The cool thing about this is somebody had heard that I, my tools had gotten, been stolen. And they gave me a check for $500 to replace my tools. So that morning I called them and said, hey, my tools are back. I have your check. I'm going to bring it back to you. And they said, um, no, the Lord told us that we were going to give you that $500 and you can use it for what you want to use it for. Um, so it just was like a blessing upon blessing, but that's not, that was good for me. But the blessing part was, is this deputy sheriff, uh, he, he doesn't attend church. And so I got to go down to the sheriff's department and share the story. 
and share the miracle of God. And I got to tell him, I said, do you realize that God used you in a miracle? And I could tell he's starting to choke up. And uh, I said, man, I am so blessed, you know, I'm, I'm blessed with this, this money. And so here's what we're going to do. Shelly and I are going to take you and your wife out to dinner to celebrate God's blessings. And he's like, that sounds good. That sounds great. So th- it just, I was just, that's extra. That's all extra. Somebody stole my tools. I don't like thieves. It drives me crazy. But you, you can steal stuff. You can steal material stuff. But you can also steal People, right? You can steal somebody else's spouse, which we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. You can steal also other things, non-material things. How many have ever had their reputation stolen? How many have had somebody steal your trust? All right, so there's a lot of ways, you know, we think of stealing, oh, don't take the candy bar off the shelf. There's a lot of ways we can, we can steal and break this commandment. The second commandment is in Exodus 20, 17, and it says this, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male or female servants, his ox or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. How many have really struggled with coveting your neighbor's donkey? (laughs) I mean, you know, hey, in, in Israel, in Jordan, I was struggling because there was a, I was on a donkey that I could have used a better donkey. I could have, that donkey was sad. Uh, so I'll tell you that story later. But, uh, you know, no, you know, but now we don't struggle with their ox. If they have ox in their yard, you probably live in Oakdale. Um, but, uh, you know, it, you know we, they don't have that. But do we walk out and we see their Lexus? Oh, yeah. I, I would look good in a Lexus. I would. I mean, do, do we walk out and we see, see their house and go, oh, yeah, I wish I had that house. Okay? It's just a little different. Do not covet. This is, now, this is not language that we really use a lot today. So I have, you know, I, I've told you I'm not very edumacated. Uh, so I have to look up words so I can understand what they mean before I get up and preach about them. It's kind of important. So I looked up the, what, what it means to covet in the dictionary, and I found the definition. It means to want, to wish for, or to desire something you do not possess or that belongs to someone else inordinately. Yeah, I had to look up that word too. Inordinately, because I had no idea what that meant. <laughs> Inordinately means exceedingly, uh, means exceeding reasonable limits. All right? So it's wanting something that does not belong to you, exceeding reasonable limits. All right? It doesn't mean that I don't wish for things or that I don't desire things. But when it becomes this driving force, this controlling force in my life that's beyond reasonable limits. You see, the incredible thing about the Ten Commandments is that they're not only there in the Old Testament, we see these a lot in the New Testament. And so we're going to see, we're going to look at some scriptures in the New Testament. Remember, we talked about before this, the Israelites had 613 laws. Like that's the penal code that we have today, man. That is, if you've ever read the penal code, sorry. Um, but uh, it's huge. Uh, then God summarized it. We talked about God summarized it up in the Ten Commandments to Moses. That's the Cliff Notes version of the laws. And then Jesus he goes, he goes, I can do better than that. I'm going to go two greatest commandments, and he tweets it to us, all right? So he boils it down to two commandments that encompass all of that. And so we're going to look at how the New Testament develops and works into some of these commandments. In Romans chapter 13, verses 9, it says this, the commandments... You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, or whatever other command there may be are summed up in this command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So when we're talking about this 
idea of stealing and coveting, would you want your neighbor to steal your stuff? Would you want your employees to take home your stuff? Now, Ephesians 4, chapter 28 talks about stealing. He says, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Need some clarification on that one? <laughs> you want me to, let's go and look that up on the internet, all right? Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others. See, there, there's, a, there's a philosophy out there that the, the Old Testament and the, is the, old, and the Old Covenant are, are not, a, they don't apply to us, that we're under this new covenant and therefore we don't need to worry about the Old Testament. That is not true. This is God's inspired word. And many a times the Old Covenant is restated in the new. And we need to understand that this is for us this morning. So as I chose to do these two commandments together because they, they just interact with each other. Let me, let me explain. What leads so many people to stealing something that doesn't belong to them? It is the coveting. It is the wanting and the wishing for, the desiring for that which doesn't belong to them inordinately. James 4, 1 through 3 says, What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill, you covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask God, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. See, it's, it's, it's so related to what we are and who we are and, and how we walk in freedom that we can become so enslaved um, in this. If, if in our society we could practice these two commandments, man, it would eliminate so many problems. And we would find and experience such great freedom. You know, uh, okay, our covet covetous attitudes cause all kinds of problems. Let me illustrate it. Take three toddlers or preschoolers, put them in that back room, put one iPad back there and watch it. Watch the fighting begin. Watch the battles begin. I mean, yeah, that, I want that. I want to watch this. And, you know, I've seen it on the back row, you know, before service, you know, kids getting upset because I want to watch this video. I mean, you know, we have these desires and man, we're, we're ready to go to battle for them. You know, and that's really cute. That's really funny. But put five adult men in a room with one TV and one remote and watch the battles begin, right? <laughs> All right. You, you, you want to come to my house and put a 49er game on when the Raiders? It's not going to happen. We're going to war. We're going to go to war. Um, all right. But uh, this morning, we have to see that these two commandments are not keeping us from the things we desire. They are keeping us free from the things that can enslave us. What do they free us from? They, first of all, they free us from the slavery of materialism. You see, we live in a society that pushes this idea that the one who has the most toys when they die wins. That is false. Your kids win. <laughs> so buy lots of stuff, mom and dad. No, uh, your kids win, but you don't win because you can't take it with you. TV, media, companies are always pushing that we have to have the next latest, greatest thing. If my neighbor, my friend, or my spouse gets the new iPhone 24 double XL, then I have to have it too right now. And what I'll do is I'll steal my kids upgrade. See, is stealing, coveting. Steal my kids upgrade so that I can get the new phone. Oh, but I don't steal. I don't. See, I, this, this is one I struggle with because I'm a gadget person. I love gadgets. My wife teases me because I'm a gadget person. Anybody know what this is? What's this? Yes. And this is, what is it, Daniel? That's right. It's, if you look this up on Amazon, it's called a spam slicer. Now, in my house... This is the greatest invention ever, ever. My house, we eat a lot of spam. I love spam. 
And we, uh, we fry it. We put it in pancakes. Have you ever had a Spam pancake? It's amazing. You come to my house and you'll have a Spam pancake. But look at this thing. This thing, you just line it up here instead of sitting here cutting slices after slices. You just line it up here. Look at that. Cuts through it like butter. Look at that. Look at that. Nice, even slices. Do so you fry it up real nice? You know, it's great. I wash my hands. Mmm. Ash going. Anybody want some? I'm going to show them. Sir. Show them. You go, bro. Show them, bro. That's good stuff right there. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. That's so delicious. I'm a gadget guy, so I can get caught up. Somebody clean that later. I can get caught up in materialism if I don't watch it. Now, holy cow, that was strong. I got, I got the less sodium, and it's still saltier. Uh, I can get so caught up in it. Now, I like gadgets, but here's the thing with me and gadgets. They have to actually work. I want things that I can use on a regular basis. I don't buy things that sit in my closet for six years. I use this thing all the time. This thing's amazing. You need to, Amazon, they're $4.99. I get kicked back if you, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but it, it's so easy. The problem is, is when we start coveting all these things around us, all this material goods around us, and we become slaves to it. We begin to plot and we begin to try to figure out how we can get a hold of that for ourselves. Who do we got to, who do we got to work to make sure we get that? Or who do we need to, Take, maybe we charge a little extra on this bid. Even to the point of stealing. The second thing that this frees us from is the slavery to success. We get so caught up in wanting to be successful or, or wanting the success that somebody else has that they've achieved that we begin to covet, which leads us into a slavery. We begin to want success that we don't possess to the place that nothing else matters. And then here's what happens is we want it so bad, we begin to steal time. We begin to steal time from our home. Why? Because we're, we're going to work that extra, we're going to work so much overtime so we can get this, or we can, the boss will see us and notice this. And I'm not against, I, I, I'm a hard worker. I, I work typically six days a week, and I get, take one day off, if that. I'm all about working. But when we start stealing time from our families, our spouses, the time that we should be home, and growing them and pouring into them, because we want to be successful. We want to get that next promotion. There, you'll never get that back. We steal from others trying to climb the corporate ladder. We don't care who we got to step on to get there. We don't care who we got to push down to get there. And you know what? We steal from God because we're not using the gifts and the time that he's given us to worship him and honor him. And success becomes an idol. Yes. If I just get to here, if I just climb this ladder, you know, it's the same thing in the church world. Pastors, right? We're, us pastors, we're on the track of climbing the successful ladder, right? I started ministry 25 years ago. I went into ministry, been credentialed that long. And I would have pictured myself at this point in my life, 47 years old, 25 years later, my dream to climb the corporate ladder, go to college, get your degree, get your education, get your license, be a youth pastor, be an associate pastor, and then you arrive when you are pastoring a large church, the corporate ladder of Christianity.
God had different plans. He had to kill some dreams that I had that were my dreams, not his dreams. And I had to let him die. And I had to walk in him. I had to kill the idol of success in my life so that I could truly find out what it means to be successful in him. Truly understand what it is. Now, let me just say this. Let me just, material things and success are not bad things. All right? I'm not telling you to go sell your Lexus. I'm not telling you to go sell your house and live in an apartment. Uh, that's, not, that's not what this is about. It's not about what we possess or where we're at in our stage of life. It's about our heart. And it's about walking in that stage of life in freedom. You see, my prayer for each of you is that you would have the things you need to enjoy the freedom that God has given you. That you would succeed at what God has created and purposed you to do. So how do we do that? How do we live free God's way? First of all, we learn to be content. We learn to be content. Philippians 4.12, Paul tells us, he says, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. You see, Paul understood. Do not covet. Do not steal because those are going to enslave me. So I need to be content in what I have. And Paul understood. Paul was a very educated man. He had lots, he had all the stuff. He understood that. And he also understood what it meant to be locked up in jail and have nothing. And he understood that he needed to be content. You see, the slavery to materialism is not a possessions problem. It's a heart problem. We can be materialistic when we have everything or when we have nothing. It's not about your status. It's about your heart. You see, Paul understood the secret. What is the secret that he's talking about? The secret is found in verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's the secret of contentment. It's understanding that we are depending on a source that is not of this world. That Christ is our source to make it through anything. So whether I have a little or whether I have a lot, it don't matter because my dependence is upon him. He is my source. My job is not my source. The government is definitely not my source. The lottery is not your source. So quit buying the tickets. He is, the secret of being content is understanding he has it all. The second way that God, we live free in God's plan is we understand and accept that we are managers. We are not the owners. We are managers. Remember the parable of the master who gave his servants some talents and he went away on a trip and he came back, Matthew 25, in verse 19, it says, after a long time, their master returned from his trip and he called them to give an account of how they had used his money. You see, the whole thing was, say, they, one had 10, one had, or one had five, one had three, and one had one, right? The one with five went out and doubled it. The one with three went out and doubled it. The one with one, he went and hid it. He didn't use it for what God had purposed him for. And he got it taken away. You see, the other two understood that it wasn't theirs. They were just managing it, and they needed to manage it well that they were going to be held accountable for how they managed what God had given them. You know, one of these days, every one of us will stand before God and give an account for what he has given us and what he has blessed us and what he has anointed us with. Man, I don't want to get up there and I don't want you to get up there on that day and be embarrassed. Like being cuffed and dragged to the back of an amusement park. I want you to be able to get up there and say, I laid it all out for you, God. I did my best to manage what you gave me through your spirit, through your strength. I invested in people's lives. 
I pointed people the best I could to you and your cross. We have to understand that everything comes from him. James 1, 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Our wealth, our strength, our health, our intellect, our talents, our spiritual gifts are from God, and we are managers, not owners. To live free, we must settle this issue in our hearts of ownership. Is it God or is it me? Every time I take ownership, I sure mess things up. Every time I try to take over and run the business of Tracy's life, I mess it up. Who owns you? Who owns it all? God or you? The third thing that we do to walk free God's way is we must practice obedience with our money. Ah! I knew it. That preacher was coming after my wallet. That's right. Get him out right now. No. Not at all. See, I'm not after your money. I'm not after your wallet. I'm after God's blessing and protection over your heart and your life. I'm over what God wants for you. That's what I'm about. You see, God don't need your money. He already owns it. Right? If he wants your money, he'll take it. And you'll be bankrupt. You'll have to sell your cars or they'll come and repo your car. He'll foreclose on your house. If God wants your stuff, he'll take it. And when we're disobedient with what God has given us, he's going to take it sooner or later. You see, paying tithe is a scriptural thing that has a promise of God's blessings. Not sure why anyone would want to miss out on that. I mean, that's kind of one of those, duh. I mean, the Bible says, if I tithe, that God will bless me. He'll take care of me. Okay, we believe this is God's word inspired by him, right? If you don't believe this, then just close your ears. But if you do believe this and you're not tithing, duh. You think God's going to bless you? No. He doesn't go against his word. That's not me saying it. Those are not my words. Like Maka said, this is not Papa T's words. It's God's word. When we are disobedient with our money, we're not stealing from the church. We're stealing from God. Ooh, that hurts. Oh, man, that, you know, you kind of hit me, Tracy, on that stealing the pen from work. But, oh, you're telling me I'm stealing from God? Yeah. When you're disobedient with your money and you're not tithing and doing what God's told you to do, you are stealing from God. You see, but if we're obedient with our money, he promises blessing. He promises freedom in our life. He promises that he will pour out, that he will open up the the floodgates of heaven upon us if we're obedient. You see, when we're obedient with our money, we're showing gratitude for what God has done in our past, how he has provided for us, his grace, his mercy, and how he's walked with us. When we are obedient with our money, we're showing that he is priority in the present. That right now, God, you are number one. You are the the priority of my life. And then when we are obedient with our money, it shows faith for our future. It's saying, God, I trust you with my future. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. These shall not, if practiced, will bring incredible blessing and freedom in our lives, our marriages, our families, and our church. You see, God isn't interested in taking away your toys. He is just desiring to give you the most incredible joy. He doesn't need your toys, but he wants your joy. See, there was a wise man who was said that he was the wisest man of all time, Solomon. And he writes a whole book in the Bible called Ecclesiastes. 
that says basically this. I'm going to summarize it. The endless pursuit of possessions, materialism, pleasures, popularity, success is meaningless. It's all meaningless. It will leave us empty. The slavery of materialism will leave you empty. The slavery of success will leave you empty. The only thing that matters is our endless pursuit of God in the freedom that he gives us to worship him. Maybe you're not a thief. Maybe you don't covet your neighbor's house, cars, but just maybe you've fallen into the slavery traps of materialism, the slavery trap of success. Well, today's a great day to find freedom. It's real simple. Repent. Commit to being content. Understand and accept that you're just the manager, not the owner. And practice biblical obedience with your mon money. And then the freedom and the blessings are going to be so incredible in your life. Would you stand with me? With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I want to assure you again, this was not a message to try to get you to give more money. We already took the offering. It is a message in my heart is that we have believers, followers of Jesus that walk in true freedom live in incredible freedom. And God has given us the, he's given us the instructions. He's given us the way. So maybe you're here today and with your heads bowed, your eyes closed, you say, I have fallen into the trap of materialism or I've fallen into the trap of success and I just need to get it right with God. I need to, re I need to let go of ownership. I need to resign as the owner and give ownership back to God of my life, my possessions, so that I don't get caught in these traps. If that's you today with your heads bowed, eyes closed, would you raise your hand? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna pray and we're gonna dismiss. It's been a great morning. Lord, I pray for those, Lord, who have raised their hand. Lord, you're working in their heart. Lord, you're working in their spirit. Lord, this is not about condemnation. This is about your Holy Spirit convicting us. Lord, convincing us of understanding what true freedom is, the blessings and the protection of God in our life. Lord, I don't want anybody to walk out of here. Lord, that they, if they walk out of here feeling beat up, that's the enemy. Lord, but if they walk out of here wanting to change, that's the spirit of God. So, Lord, for those of us that raised our hand, that we struggle in these areas of materialism or uh, these areas of success and wanting it so bad that it becomes an idol, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to repent, Lord, to be content with where we are, what you have in our life, Lord, to understand that we are managers of what you have given us, and Lord, that we would be obedient when it comes to our money and following you. And Lord, then we will experience the greatest blessings and the most incredible freedom and joy in our lives. Lord, I thank you today for your word. Lord, for your word is truth. Your word sets us free. There's power in your word. So we stand on this message today. We stand on this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you all. Have a great weekend. Uh, reminder, sign up for Connection Lunch. Also, if you can help out with some of the projects, uh, sign up on a yellow card and turn it in. See you next week. Have a great day.